So what was their business? Investment services, uh, one of the large investment banks in America, what we call the bulge bracket firms, because they were dominating the industry with others like Goldman, Morgan Stanley, Merrill Lynch, etc. And they were providing financial services, investment banking, and investment management activities increasingly towards the end, but not enough to help them out of their uh, the fixed income mess that they got into. Employing uh, more than 26,000 people at the end in 2008 and their lovely website. Uh, as I said, founded in 1850, operating at a wholesale level, dealing with governments, corporates, uh, financial institutions around the world, 5,000 employees in the UK. Uh, the core business was buying and selling shares and fixed income securities, trading and research, investment banking, which was the area that I was involved with, uh, investment management and private equity. So, a uh, sad story, as the financial crisis gathered momentum, the share price collapsed from a high of $86, and what's it trading at now? Less than three cents a share. So you see, we can all draw some uh, bitter lessons from this. I was a shareholder, uh, to my regret. Um, tried to sell as many shares as I could as soon as possible, but uh, we all were blinded as to uh, what was actually coming. Here's a little bit about the banking structure. As I said, I was a part of IBD, Investment Banking Division, which uh, comprised strategic advisory. This is where the bankers are advising client firms, companies on mergers and acquisitions, share buybacks, other things that uh, initiatives they would take. We talked a lot about this in corporate finance, right? Uh, as well as debt capital markets. I dealt a lot with those people as well. They're responsible for helping firms issue debt in the markets, bonds, and equity capital markets where they're arranging IPOs and secondary equity issues for, uh, for their clients. Very profitable business that can be, but very competitive. And uh, in my capacity, uh, I regularly reported to what we call the Commitment Committee. Yeah? This was uh, a committee of uh, senior experts in the bank who decided, should we be doing this business? and uh, under what terms. And so I would report my credit findings to them. Does, is it a good credit risk? Because three fundamental questions the firm would ask itself. First of all, is it legal? And once we got over the ha that hurdle, um, is it, uh, well, you may find it odd to think this, but we would ask, is, is it the right thing to do? Is it ethical? I think that Lehman's uh, credit culture, when I was there, was, was sound, despite the fact that uh, uh, what happened to the firm, and I wasn't involved on this side where all the problems occurred, fixed income issuance of structured products and trading those. And uh, thirdly, uh, was it economically sound? Would it deliver profits for us? Uh, those were three basic questions that the commitment committee uh, discussed. And then we had another dedicated committee that we called the High Yield Committee. This was bonds basically uh, yielding uh, high spreads because there were very risky credits underneath. And so there was a lot of discussion that had its own dedicated committee chaired by, I call him potty mouth, human piranha, Tom Bernard. Um, I don't know if you, any of you have read this book by Michael Lewis, Liar's Poker, which describes his experience at uh, Solomon Brothers. Very entertaining book, I recommend it highly. And this guy is still around writing books like The Big Short, I think was his most recent book. I don't know if you've uh, read that. I think it refers to Lehman as well. But uh, in that book, Michael Lewis talks about this guy who would get up to speak to them during the training program at Solomon, that he described as a human piranha. And every other word was the F word, you know, it was F this, F that. And that's exactly how Tom would chair his committees. The air turned blue around him. Uh, but uh, he certainly made an impact, you could say. Like Wolf of Wall Street, hasn't that set a record for most uses of the F word in a, in a film? <laughs> this stuff went on. You, you ran into some real wackos. I don't know how I spent 15 years there and survived, uh, more or less intact. And then we had other committees like New Products Committee. Uh, so the decision process was often, oh, we've developed this new product. Let's go out and sell it to all our clients immediately without taking account of, well, is this really what the client needs or wants? No, we were focused on the profit uh, and what we had to sell. And this was one of the uh, problems that contributed not only to the demise of Lehman, but also to all the problems that we have in financial services today. Right? And then I interacted occasionally with the fixed income group. That's where Dick came from. He was a trader of uh, fixed income products, um, research and trading. As I said, this was the engine of the firm. It had a decent reputation as a fixed income house. You know, bonds are not that risky compared to, say, equities. Goldman did a terrific job in equities. They were taking arguably more risk, but apparently managing it uh, very well. 
And I had my counterparts there in corporate credit who would monitor the counterparty risk of uh, the clients that we were doing business with. And then the equity side, comprising research and trading. And you know, the equity researchers and the bankers could not talk to each other. There had to be a Chinese wall in between. And yet there were times when that Chinese wall was penetrated. Um, the banker is working on some M&A transaction for uh, the client that the researcher is covering. We talked about some of these issues in uh, equity research, right? And occasionally something might leak to influence uh, the equity analyst's recommendation. So um, what do you want to do? Uh, prepare the market for best economic conditions for that acquisition. And the equity report would be written with a slant that way, although it ought never to have been. We had one initiative internally called Targeting and Alignment, in which basically these two groups were encouraged to talk to each other. All the banks were doing it at the time. And uh, this was discovered by the regulator. We all ended up paying huge fines as a result, slaps on the wrist, uh, and then we moved on.